Okay. <laughs> Here are all my palettes. Um, yeah. You know what? I was going through and trying to reorganize my palettes and to put them on two shelves because I couldn't fit them into the one shelf and the little organizer that I had. And I was like, you know what? I can probably get rid of a few of these and or I just need to reorganize and refresh. So I pulled everything off my shelves. And since I'm doing that, I was like, you know what? They're already off my bookshelves. Let's go ahead and do a big ol' eyeshadow palette collection slash declutter. And this is also, as I think I've already told you guys, going to be kicking off my makeup collection slash declutter series. I think the last one I did a full makeup collection declutter and, you know, just showing you guys my collection was in Virginia. I believe I did the whole collection. I did a couple last year, I think, of like palettes and highlighters, and I think that was it. Anyway, I figured it was time to go through my collection, kind of refresh it, and see what I could get rid of. I'm not someone who's like a big declutterer in that when I go through my collection, I feel like I have to get rid of half or anything like that. I never have those goals, but I just want to go through this collection and make sure I still want to have this stuff in my collection. I am someone who is a big eyeshadow palette junkie, and I consider myself an eyeshadow palette reviewer, so I like to have a lot of palettes to do comparisons with. With and to be able to compare new palettes to. So I know I'm gonna have a lot more palettes than I need to, but keep that in mind as I'm going through. Some I just like for reference, some are for nostalgia, some are for memories, and that sort of thing. I'm not someone who has to make sure every palette that I own, I am going to get a ton of use or pan or anything like that. Um, palettes are just fun for me, so I don't mind having a ton. But yeah, we're gonna go through this, and I don't even know where to start. I should say that I have a pile of palettes that are all smaller that I keep separate because they're tiny enough where I feel like they would get lost in all of this. So I'm going to be doing that in a later video. Stay tuned for that. But these are bigger palettes and I think I counted them somewhat correctly. We're going to see. I'll tally it up as I go along with the editing, but I counted them up as I was laying them down and I think I have a hundred and I think just shy of 130 if I remember right. So that is a lot of palettes. We'll see. I was kind of thinking it'd be neat if I could get it closer to the 100 mark. Um, but with that said, getting rid of 30 palettes sounds like a lot. So I don't know. I'm not, like I said, I'm not holding myself to any kind of goal. We're just going to go through them and I'm going to show you guys what I have and then let you guys know if I'm going to keep them or pass them on. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and do my Instagram shout out for today. And for today, I'm going to be highlighting this commenter from my most recent Instagram post. They left this really sweet comment and it just stood out to me and I really do appreciate it. So yeah, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to comment on my posts over on Instagram. I really do appreciate it. And you are my Instagram shout out for today. Okay, I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I've pulled you in a little bit closer just so you guys can see the palettes better. We're just gonna pull and go from it and I'm gonna go with this little stack here because this is actually my most recent palette that I just finished. I think by the time this goes up, I should have done my palette pulls, so I'll leave that linked up here. But anyway, since they're the most recent palettes, I figured we could talk about them first and get them out of the way. This is the Musée Beauty Van Gogh Starry Night palette. Definitely keeping this. Not only do I enjoy the color story and the formula, but I also really enjoy the brand and I like to keep this, especially since it's a newer palette for comparison purposes. Purposes, but yeah, definitely not going anywhere. I'm gonna go ahead and keep a tally on the screen. I think that'd be fun, even though I feel like I'm gonna be disappointed that I don't get rid of anything, but you know. Next up is the Storybook Starry Night palette. Also not getting rid of this. I do have a video comparing this with the Van Gogh palette because they're both Van Gogh slash Starry Night inspired. So if you wanna watch that, I'll try to link it down below if I remember. But anyway, not getting rid of this. It's just so beautiful. I think it's gorgeous just like as a decorative piece. It's very pretty. This is my Vivid Rose from Gimme Glow Cosmetics. I really do like this palette for it being pinks and purples, which I'm not super big into. When it comes to pinks and purples, this is a great palette to go to. I had a good experience with it, and I like the fact that it has more mattes than shimmers, and yeah, this, this shimmer also is stunning. But anyway, I had a great time with this palette, really enjoyed it. Next up would be the Terra Moon Cosmetics El Barrio palette. Definitely not getting rid of this. I, I mean, you're not going to see many getting rid of my most recent palettes because I do like to keep them around, especially if I just got them. I had a great time with this. It was very pretty. Again, all my thoughts are going to be in my most recent palette, Palooza. And for all these palettes, if I've reviewed them on my channel, they're going to be in a palette, Palooza. So I'll try to leave the playlist down below in the, in the description box. Moni Jasper, also not getting rid of it. It is a very pretty neutral, but still colorful. It's got those pops of deep colors. I really enjoyed this palette and yeah, it was fun. It was great to have when I needed an everyday look, but I wanted the pop of interest in there with the blue and the yellow, really pretty. This is the ColourPop App for a Sight palette. Not getting rid of this baby. It is a gorgeous color story. I really do love that. This is the Nomad Iceland Fire and Ice palette. Also not getting rid of it. This color story is just ugh, so beautiful. I know I'm like flashing you with all the light, but I'm trying not to here. But anyway, this is a gorgeous color story. I had so much fun with it. Definitely not getting rid of it. Colourpop Fade Into Hues palette. Uh, I'm not getting rid of it. This is so much fun. I love having a rainbow palette and this is such a variety of the rainbow palette with really softer shades, but also deeper shades of the colors. It was just such a good time. 
And then last up from last month's palette was the Chill Out palette from Yvette Beauty. Also going to hold on to this. I really do enjoy Yvette Beauty. This is my second palette from them. It's got a lot of glitters, but I mean, if I ever need blue glitters, I'm set with this palette. All right, so after going through all those palettes and getting rid of none of them, let me see if I can get rid of some. These palettes are just so clunky. Let's talk about them. These are the Profusion C uh, Siennas and Wanderlust palette. Ooh, can I be in frame here? Okay, these two palettes, I used to be on uh, Profusion's PR list, and that's how I got these two. And they're okay. I'm, just, I'm not a huge fan of Profusion's eyeshadow quality. I mean, these are also ones that I tried. I think this was in 2019, so maybe their 2020 formula is better, their 21 formula is better. But for these being so large I just wasn't a fan of the color story especially like this one with the browns and the greens there wasn't enough matte variety for me it's a lot of shimmery like colorful shimmers and you guys know I like colorful mattes and then this is just such a neutral palette I think I'm gonna get rid of both of these because I also have this one this is Profusion's Mixed Metals and Peach and I remember really enjoying this and it's a smaller palette so like I said for me I'm someone who I review a lot of palettes I like to have products from you know I like to have a palette from each brand that I've tried to go back to I remember enjoying this palette and it's a smaller palette I'm gonna hold on to this that way I can reference it and I'm going to declutter these two giants because they're just so big and clunky and I'm just not a fan of it also like packaging just seems I don't know just very cheap whereas this one it's just a lot nicer I mean nothing super luxe but it's just a nicer experience looking at it I think it looks prettier so gonna hold on to the mixed metals peach and I'm dropping the wanderlust and the sienna okay let's also do the autumn palette by vet beauty definitely not getting rid of this this palette was limited edition I'm not sure if it's still in stock on our website but it, it came out for the fall and it is such a beautiful palette all matte palette gorgeous color story it was so much fun I really do like this and this was my first introduction to the brand the BH pistachio palette has been staring at me um, so I might as well address it not getting rid of this really do enjoy it love this very green monochromatic palette but this I'm actually going to let go. This is Storybook Cosmetics Fairy Tales palette in Little Red Riding Hood. I'm going to let this go because I have the Starry Night palette that I can reference for Storybook Cosmetics. And I wasn't a big fan of this color story. So for me, this is an easy one that I can let go of. Nomad's Lake Como palette. I really did like this. Levi got into it. We're not going to talk about it because I'm still sad. Thankfully, he went with the neutral, so he didn't really touch these. I was very, very thankful. But anyway, this green and this uh, blue row, I really do love. And it created so many fun looks. So definitely not getting rid of this palette either. All right, let's go ahead and address the ABH palettes. These are the only ABH palettes that I have. We have the Subculture palette that I'm definitely not getting rid of, keeping that. Modern Renaissance, I feel like I might as well keep it. It's a neutral palette, but it has some warmth in it, some fun color, but it's also like so old. I don't know if anyone would want it, even if I decluttered it, so I'm gonna keep it. This is the Riviera palette from uh, ABH. I remember just having an okay experience with this. I wasn't too impressed with the purple, most definitely, but I remember having a good time with the pink and the blue, so I'll hold on to it. This Norvina palette is the one that I'm really torn on. I feel like when I look at it, these tones are just so not me. Like they're very neutral with a couple pops of very light purple, which just totally isn't me. So I feel like I can get rid of this. But at the same time, this is a fairly old palette. So I'm like, who is actually gonna want it? But at the same time, it's like I like to reference things, as I was saying, with new releases that come out. So I think I'm gonna hold on to it because ABH is such a popular brand. Not that I'm really trying palettes that have this color story anyway, but I mean, I have it. I got this when it launched, I'm pretty sure, so it's fairly old. I'll just keep it with the family. Yes, you can judge me. I'm not getting rid of it. Melt Cosmetics Gemini palette. I love this palette so much. It's so beautiful, and the color story inside is so much fun. Really love this palette. Of course not getting rid of it. This is She Glam Seafoam Palette. I'm gonna get rid of this. I wasn't happy with it at all, and this is a palette that I look at, and I can definitely say that I never have a desire to want to reach back for this, so it's easy for me to say no thank you, so decluttering this one. Also, very surprised, I think I'm going to declutter this one because I just was not impressed. I feel like I could keep it for the beautiful aspect of it because it is very beautiful to look at. But I was so disappointed in the inside that I just never have a desire to use it again. So, I mean, I have a lot of pretty palettes. I don't need to keep it. Even though this, I feel like I want to keep it because I like wanted this for so long and I finally got it. So I'm like, you can't get rid of it now, but... I don't know, I just, I am, I'm reminded of all the disappointing looks that I did, so I'm gonna get rid of it. I don't need to keep it, I have so many palettes, I'm, I'm getting rid of it. I am gonna keep this though, just because I do like the artwork and I do like the color story. It was just such a pretty mix of purples and greens, I had so much fun with this, so I remember, I have fond memories of it, I'm gonna hang on to it for now, even though the brand is no more. This is BH Cosmetics. It's the Cold Stone palette. Uh, this is something I got in PR a long, long time ago. And I remember just being like okay with the formula. I wasn't too impressed. So I'm going to get rid of this, especially since I have more current BH products, which I feel like is a more accurate representation of their brand anyway. This is back in 2017, I think. So I'm going to declutter this. 
This is Lorac Cosmetics Neon Lights palettes. As much as I wish uh, I really enjoyed this, I did not. And considering I have so many better palettes from indie brands to give me colorful looks and colorful eyeshadows, and this, you know, blue did, was not impressive at all, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. Obviously not getting rid of this. This is Color Rain's Safari Rain palette. This is limited edition, no longer available. This color story is so beautiful. The packaging is gorgeous. Love it, not going anywhere. Also not going anywhere, September Rose Cosmetics Slush Palette. I really do like this beautiful rainbow of a palette. It's so beautiful. I've done so many looks with it over the course of 2020. Many of the looks are on my YouTube channel, so definitely keeping. My other Nomad palette, this is the Cartagena Magica palette. Definitely not going anywhere. Even though I would say of the three palettes I own from them, this is my least favorite. It's still a very pretty palette. Would work great as a companion. I just like the brand. I think it's a beautiful palette. Keeping it. All right, this is my Mayas Cosmetics Smoky Glow Palette. Definitely not going anywhere. Keeping this around if you like pinks and purples. I think this is still available at the time of me filming this. It is a like a collab, so I think they're gonna phase it out soon, but as of right now, it's still available. I'm sure this comes as no surprise to anyone, but I'm keeping the Tribe by Juvia's Place Palette. This is discontinued. Levi, again, we don't need to talk about it. But anyway, discontinued, gorgeous palette. Absolutely love this palette. Don't know why they discontinued it. My Give Me Glow Juicy Olive Palette, also a love of mine. It's such a beautiful grungy palette. This was the first palette I tried from Give Me Glow and I was so very impressed. I feel like I'm out of focus. There we go, sorry about that. Anyway, I was so impressed. I've been in love with Give Me Glow's formula ever since. Oh, here's uh, Violet Voss's Flamingo Palette. I think this is the only palette I have by Violet Voss, but I remember being very impressed with this palette. I kind of want to go back to it because it's such a fun and interesting color story, and I haven't used it in forever, but yeah, this was a fun look. I did a palette bingo with this on my channel. I think it was my first Kate Miss with this, but anyway, I like it. I think it's pretty. I enjoyed the looks that I got with it. I'm keeping it. Muse Beauty's Impressionism Palette. This was their first palette they launched. They did such a good job with this. So very impressed with it. Really do love it, so definitely not going anywhere. Okay, this is a little rock's tail as old as time. I'm so torn with this because I guess, I mean, honestly, I could get rid of it and be fine, but it's a beautiful palette. And that's one thing that I am totally a sucker for. And especially since I already own it and I think it's beautiful, like I'm just going to keep it for, you know, a decoration purposes in my collection. So yeah, not really into the color story. It was limited edition. You can't get it anymore. But anyway, I just think it's very beautiful. And like I said, I have it already, so might as well keep it. Okay, here's the Artistry Palette by She Glam. I am going to keep this just like I said for reference since I only tried this and one other She Glam palette. I'm going to hold on to it because I really did enjoy these two shimmers and, you know, this kind of corner up here was really fun to give me a yellow, green, orangey look. This is my Made by Mitchell Feet on the Ground palette. Definitely not getting rid of it. I enjoyed this palette um, and especially considering how much I paid for this with shipping and all that. So definitely not going anywhere. It's a newer palette. I really did enjoy it and I wouldn't mind doing more looks with it, which is always a good sign. Let's get this mammoth out of the way. This is the Worldly Palette by P. Louise. Absolutely love it. This was my number two palette from 2020, so obviously not going anywhere. Really do like this. The Blush Tribe of Helena palette, also not going anywhere. This is such a beautiful palette, and you know, it's no longer available anymore, so definitely not going anywhere. Artwork is beautiful too. Polina is beautiful. Definitely keeping this. Okay, I have two palettes from Netty Bird. I tried their brand this year and their palettes were just okay. I think the reason I wasn't too impressed is because after buying them, I saw the same palette on many different brands' websites. So it, not that that's bad that it was private labeled, but it just felt a little less unique. And also too, this was more expensive than the majority of the same type of palettes that I saw. So, you know, with all that in mind, it was just kind of like, eh. Anyway, should I keep both or just one? You know, I'm just gonna keep one. I remember having a lot of fun with this. I created a really fun orange orange and red, or orange, yellow and red look. There's also orange. But I remember creating a lot more looks at this that I enjoyed, and the green, I just wasn't as impressed. I think there wasn't enough mattes in it for me, if I remember right. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter the green, and I'll keep the orange. Also, there's only two glitters in this one as opposed to three in this. So decluttering, uh, sibling rivalry, and gonna keep vitamin C just for reference. This is my Kaleidos Futurism 1 Sci-Fi Greens palette. Definitely not going anywhere. And I'm currently waiting for my Club Nebula palette from Angelica Nyquist collab with them to ship. So once that comes out, it'll be two palettes from Kaleidos in my collection. But yeah, definitely not going anywhere. Love that palette. My Flower Beauty Jungle Lights palette. This formula is amazing. I absolutely love it. If you want to get an idea of what the Gimme Glow like shimmer formula is like, but you don't want to order indie, you want to order drugstore, pick up this palette. It really does remind me of Gimme Glow's formula. They're very similar. Not saying they're dupable or exact or anything like that, but they just give me the same vibes. But anyway, love this palette, not going anywhere. 
I'm sure this comes as absolutely no surprise, but my Menagerie Cosmetics palettes are not going anywhere. In fact, where's my Pastel Pup? That's also not going anywhere. Literally right in front of my eyes. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'm not getting rid of any of these. If you haven't seen them, this is the Whale Song palette. Probably if I had to pick one top favorite from her, this would be it. I just love this combination of grungy greens and blues. This is the Feral palette, which was my first introduction to the brand. The first palette I bought from the brand. The Killer Purr palette, which is my favorite neutral palette. I absolutely love this palette. So very pretty. And then last up, the Pastel Pup palette, which is a cute little pastel rainbow palette. So yeah, definitely not going anywhere. I love these not only for their formula, but their artwork on each of these palettes is stunning and I could like look at them all day long. Okay, this is the Pirates of the Caribbean times Little Rock collab. This palette's not going anywhere. Not really interested in the inside of it anymore, but I was a big fan of Pirates of the Caribbean in my teens, and, and Little Rock was a big fan of mine when I first got into makeup, and I love the packaging. I just love this collab, so I keep this for nostalgia. Okay, this is my Maybe Cosmetics uh, collection. Their palettes are just so very cute. This is the Take Me to Hong Kong. This is the Take Me to Tokyo. This is the Take Me to Istanbul. And then this is the Take Me to Santorini. I had so much fun with all of these palettes. Definitely don't want to get rid of them. Keeping them in my collection. Again, palettes that are so beautiful to look at. I think the artwork on them is amazing. And yeah, just a really fun and colorful color story. So definitely keeping all of these. Okay, this is a Venus XL palette. Um, I've kept it for so long, but like looking at it, I really am not interested in it. I'm not like digging these colors. So as much as I like like to hold on to palettes just for pretty packaging, and I do think this is pretty and whatnot, but I am never going to reach for this again. And I do remember not being super impressed with this formula. And since I do have another palette from Lime Crime, I feel like I can get rid of this and still have a palette from them to reference. So I'm going to declutter this. This is the palette I was talking about. This is the Venus 2 palette. I really did love the mattes in this palette, but the shimmers were pretty disappointing. However, you know, it's just two shimmers in this palette. But anyway, I really did enjoy the mattes in here. They were so easy to blend. And like I said, I can keep this in reference for Lime Crime, so I don't need the other one. So keeping this. Okay, this is from Makeup Forever. This is their Volume 3 palette. Um, it's an all shimmer palette, and I never I never really could get into it even when I first got it. I bought it on sale at Sephora, and I tried to, you know, just get into it. Because, I mean, this was a Makeup Revolution palette, and I just always heard such great things about their formula. So I was like, come on, it's great. You got to give it a chance. I don't honestly don't remember my thoughts on it. I think just the color story and the fact that it was all shimmers is what made me struggle to really get into it and actually use this. So, I mean, and then now looking at it, my, my preferences have changed. So, so, I mean, I was never really into this palette. Looking at it now, I still am not into it. So, I just needed to declutter this. I don't need to hold on to this. So, going to declutter this. The Shroud Times Beauty Bean It's Freaking Bats palette, obviously not going anywhere. Uh, we had a horrible tragedy when it fell off of my desk and my son found it, but we're not going to talk about that and we're just going to close it. And yes, anyway, it's a beautiful palette and definitely not going anywhere. Okay, these are two palettes from Bad Habit Beauty. This is the Aphrodite palette which looks like that. I think it was a dupe for Huda, and this is the Aurora palette, which was a dupe for ABH. I mean, Bad Habit isn't around anymore. Oh, I think I had one more. Wait one second. Yes, I did. I had the Inferno. I think this was a dupe for the Naked Heat palette. Anyway, Bad Habit isn't around anymore. I was never impressed with their formula. I was like the only one when everyone was talking about how great Bad Habit was. I tried it. I was just like, eh, it's not really good. But I kept them for reference, but I mean, now Bad Habit isn't even, like I said, it's not a thing anymore. They, they're, I think, a skincare brand now. They're not even a makeup brand. So I was never a fan of these and you can't even get them anymore. I don't need to reference them anymore. I'm going to declutter them. I don't know why I haven't decluttered them sooner. This is from Elmar Cosmetics. Uh, this is their first palette that they launched. I really enjoyed this palette. I remember I think the two darker shades being a little sticky, but the shimmers were stunning and these were really easy to use. So definitely not going anywhere. Also, this shade is just absolutely stunning. So blinding. So yeah, definitely not going anywhere. It's my only palette from Elmar. I want to try more from her brand. Okay, this is Spectrum uh, from Prism Makeup. This is also due for that um, ABH. It was their Prism palette. I'm going to declutter it just because, I, I, I don't know, I just don't need to have this around. I don't think you can get a hold of this anymore. I think I looked before and Prism Makeup is like only available on Amazon and not all the palettes. I think this one I couldn't find. I forget. But it's just hard to find, a little sketch to find, so I don't need to have this in my collection anymore. Ooh, this is Midas Cosmetics' first palette that I tried from them, the La Dolce Vita palette. This was my introduction to the brand, and they don't have this available anymore, so I technically don't need to keep it, but I enjoyed it. I like the color story, and I don't know. I'm just going to keep it for nostalgia, I guess. I'm not ready to part with it yet. This is from Moon Slice Beauty. Uh, I've talked a lot about this palette just because I love the palette, but the brand is a little sketch. They own Saucebox Cosmetics. That's all you need to know if you want to look it up. Look up Saucebox Cosmetics and you can find all the drama there that they have still yet to actually rectify. 
Anyway, um, I really enjoyed this palette. I thought it was absolutely beautiful, but I don't really feel comfortable really promoting the brand just because of who the brand owner is and how she handled the whole sauce box cosmetic situation. Anyway, I mean, there's so many green palettes out there. I don't need to keep this. I'm going to declutter. I'm, I'm decluttering it. That's why I've decided. Okay, this is hard. This is the burger palette. It's huge, but uh, I like the color story. I like how vibrant it is. This is only one of two palettes I have from Glam Light, but I don't really love how it looks. Like, it just looks kind of ooh every time I open it. However, it's so huge. It's already messed up. I don't know. I'm so torn on this. You know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna declutter it. I think I'll give it to my daughter. She'll enjoy playing with it because it's beautiful and bright and colorful and sparkly. Um, I'll keep the other Glam Light. I just, anytime I see this palette, while I like how bright and colorful it is, I just, I don't really enjoy opening it and using it because it just doesn't look that great and it's also big and bulky so it's one less thing that I would have to figure out where to store so I'm surprising myself here but I'm going to declutter this and because of that I'm going to go ahead and keep this palette this is the ice cream dreams even though I wasn't the hugest fan Levi I know I know you're going to see this in a lot of palettes he he sneaks away and if I leave my closet door open he goes right to the palettes and just digs in so this one he really did dig in anyway wasn't the hugest fan of this but I do like it for I'd like to have a palette from Glam Light for reference so I'm hanging on to this this is the Poppy Cosmetics See You Never palette. Honestly, I picked this up mainly to review on my channel, and now that I have reviewed it, I'm kind of done. And also, when I purchased it, I mean, I knew the theme was a breakup, See You Never, obviously, but I also didn't notice, I didn't read the words, and this word, where was it? Uh, that one is a word that I would never use, so I don't really like having in my collection with that, and my daughter growing up learning how to read, and she loves to go through my palettes, so I just, I'm decluttering this. I have no attachment to it, so getting rid of it. Okay, this is Cosmetics Naturally Pretty Celebration Palette. I remember loving this so much. I mean, look at that. I hit pan on it, but I'm, I'm literally never going to use this again. I mean, oh, it's still nice and soft, even though it's like, oh gosh, 15. I think I got this in 2015. It's so very old, but I'm never going to use it again. But I hate to declutter something if I know I'm going to throw it away because it's so old I wouldn't resell this yet. I don't know if any of my siblings or mom or anyone I know can use a neutral palette. I'll have to ask around. I'm going to go ahead and declutter it. I'll ask around. Worst case scenario, if no one wants it, I'll just keep it in a drawer somewhere. You know, not my makeup collection, but keep it in a drawer somewhere for my daughter later. But I'm going to see if I can find a different home for it. Okay, let's go ahead and address Too Faced Cosmetics because I keep avoiding it because... I have so freaking many from them. I mean, I have a lot. Okay, first up, definitely not getting rid of the chocolate gold palette because this is my favorite palette from them. So beautiful in that formula. The shimmer formula is really good, especially for a Too Faced. So keeping this, um, what else? I also really enjoyed this one. As neutral as it is, it has some pops. It's got the warmth in there. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna keep it. These are the ones that I have a hard time with because, well, maybe the peach. Let me look at the peach. I haven't looked at that in a while. Pretty neutral, but maybe I could, I'll, I'll just keep it as like a reference, I guess. I don't know. See, these are hard. It's just, they're color stories that I'm not really into anymore, especially the semi-sweet and then the actual original. Like, I'm totally not into them anymore, but they're also, like, super duper old, so I wouldn't sell them or give them to anyone. And my daughter really isn't into neutral makeup to destroy, so I don't really have a purpose giving them to her. She likes the colorful eyeshadows, just like Mama. I'm going to keep it for now. This is one that I'm just so torn on. I'm keeping it because it's a collection. That's what I'm going to say for now, but I, these four... Maybe next to clutter, I'll finally be ready to get rid of them. But for now, they're staying. Okay, Maya's Cosmetics Lemonade Palette. Definitely not going anywhere. Absolutely love this. My favorite yellow monochromatic palette. Okay, this is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. This palette I actually wasn't a huge fan of. It fell and that shattered and all that. But anyway, I wasn't the biggest fan of this. And since I have, let's see, what other palettes do I have from Urban Decay? I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of Urban Decay. I have their Vice 2 palette. And I keep this because I think it's beautiful to look at. So I'm going to keep the Vice palette because I still do like it and it's super old. I wouldn't sell it. But I'm going to go ahead and declutter this because I was never crazy about this. Oh, I also have the Beached Eyeshadow Palette from Urban Decay. I forgot about that. This palette was cute, um, and I actually did really enjoy it, even though there's only one matte in there. I remember creating a lot of fun blue looks with it, but, I mean, there's only one matte. Do I want to keep this? Hmm. I don't need it. I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. It's beautiful to look at, but I, I doubt I'll ever go back to it or want to go back to it. This is a Sigma Warm Neutrals Volume 2 palette. It's my only palette from Sigma, but they've actually reformulated and re-released a lot of palettes. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter this because there's no reason to keep it for reference if they've changed up their formula. So going to declutter. This is my Maybe Cosmetics Pop Zombie palette. And as much as I don't like the whole theme of it, it's a gorgeous color story. I created some really pretty looks with this. So definitely going to hang on to this. 
This is from Pretty Vulgar. This is their Nightingale palette. Um, surprisingly, I did have a good time with this, but I'm not really attached to it anymore. I'm not big into grays and like really cool toned eye looks anymore, especially such neutral ones. So, well, part of me wants to keep it so I can reference, you know, having a palette from Pretty Vulgar. I don't know, I'm just not really into the brand or wanting to keep it around. So I'm gonna surprise myself and go ahead and declutter this. I think this is from GLF Cosmetics. Oh yeah, GLF Cosmetics. This is a press glitter palette that I'm gonna hang on to because if I ever want a glittery eye look, if I ever want to top anything with glitter, this has like every color. So definitely holding on to this, even though I don't think you can get it anymore. It's just a good, you know, like all-in-one palette to have. Okay, y'all, let's talk about these as a group because I have all of the Lorac Mega Pros and then they're just pros. I'm so torn on what to do with this that I really, I just don't know. Let me go ahead and show you why I talk. But uh, these palettes are just like so much like all the same. But I was such a big fan of them and also too, Olivia got into that when she was a little girl. But also too, like if I ever went back to neutrals, like I would be set with these palettes, you know? Or if anyone ever needed to like use a neutral palette, I could just give them one of these and depend on this to be a good formula in that respect. So I'm so torn on if I should keep this or not. I feel like I don't need to keep it because I literally never think about them. But I also, they just hold a very special place in my heart. They're a really good formula. I remember having such a good time with them. So I still am not ready to declutter these. So I'm gonna keep them for now and maybe I'll declutter them when some of my younger sisters get older and are ready to, you know, use eyeshadow every day kind of thing. This would be a great formula to give them. Okay, this is Pure Cosmetics Festival 2.0 palette. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. I have the Pure Times Raw Beauty Christie palette in the wings to try. And once I have that, I'll have like that palette to reference for the Pure formula. So I don't feel like I have to hold on to this. So I'm gonna declutter it. This is the Kat Von D Metal Matte Palette. I absolutely love that aspect of it. Definitely not getting rid of this. This holds so many memories. And honestly, I bought it very much for the whole packaging of it. I thought that was so fun. So keeping it. This is the Give Me Glow Extra Spicy Palette. Definitely not going anywhere. I really did enjoy this formula. It's such a fun red and yellow palette. Okay, this is from DJ's Unique Boutique, the Reasons Palette. Uh, it's limited edition, no longer available anymore, but definitely not getting rid of it. Really did like this palette. This is from Makeup Revolution. It is their Flawless Forever Birds of Paradise palette. I wasn't super impressed with the color story, but I did have fun with it. However, I do want to keep it just because like visually, I think it's very pretty. So I'm going to hold on to it for the packaging. Okay, any background noise is Gideon in the room with me. But anyway, Lorac Cosmetics Pro To Go palette. This palette is so old. I think I'm finally ready to let go of it. This was my very first makeup PR that I ever got, like in 2013 or 12. I can't even remember. So that's why I've held on to it for so long, but I'm ready to let it go. This is Prism Makeup again. This is Supreme Chaos. I'm gonna get rid of this because last time I looked it up to link it, this was the palette I couldn't find anywhere on Amazon available. So again, there's no real point in me holding on to it. If so, ooh, I almost dropped it. So while I have been keeping it mainly for the pretty packaging, I'm ready, I can let it go. All right, this is the rest of my Juvia's Place collection. We have the Wahala palette, the Zulu palette, the Masquerade mini palette, the Magic mini palette, the Warrior three palette, the Nomad palette, and then the violets and the berries. I'm gonna go ahead and declare the violets just because I was so unimpressed with the mats in this one. I just have no desire to really use it. But as far as the rest of these, I'm gonna keep them because I like them for reference. So keeping all these and just gonna declutter one. This is from Poppy Cosmetics. This is the Neon Drip. I'm gonna definitely keep this for reference for the brand, but also because I really did enjoy it and was really happy. Oh my goodness, with all the looks, I almost dropped that. With all the looks that I got from it. So not going anywhere. This is the Ace Beauté Vintage Dawn palette. This is the only palette I have from them, I believe, so definitely not going anywhere. I absolutely love this color story, and this palette redeemed itself in my eyes. I used it a couple weeks ago and was really happy with the way my look turned out. Okay, Dose of Colors Frankation palette. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of this. I think I remember liking it, but not being blown away. Um, do I need to keep it? I don't know. I feel like I need to keep it just for like memories, but I'm not really attached to it, so is this gonna shock anyone? It's gonna shock me, but I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. Okay, I have two palettes from Tarte. This is the Tarteland Bloom that used to be my absolute favorite palette. <laughs> used to. And then this is the, what is it? Uh, Clay Play palette. Looks like this, also very neutral. I think I'm gonna declutter the Clay Play palette and just keep the Tarteland because it is at least on the outside very pretty. So keeping this, gonna declutter this. Even though it has the contours, like that's handy, but I honestly never use it. And I never really use the mattes up here, so no sense to keep it. Decluttering and keeping. 
Next up is my NYX Cosmetics Grime Palette. Definitely not going anywhere. You can't get this anymore. It was like available for just such a short moment. I was so disappointed, but such a great palette. Definitely one of my, my favorite from NYX, but definitely a favorite palette. This is the I Heart Revolution Avocado Palette. I really did enjoy this palette. I was surprised by how much I loved it and enjoyed the look, so definitely not going anywhere. And then the packaging is super cute. These are my other two Shroud Cosmetics or Strobe Cosmetics palettes, Creepy Cute palette, which I really did enjoy, and then the Divinity palette. I'm definitely gonna keep them because they are more of a recent purchase and I really did have a good time with this, so both of these are staying. Okay, we are getting down there. We have a ColourPop palette. This is My Little Pony. Gonna hold on to it, mainly for the packaging. I think it's so cute. This is the um, Yes Please palette, keeping it just because I really do like that color story. These are the ones where I'm just a little like, oh, I'm so torn. Aha uh -huh, Honey palette. And this is the Orangey Glad palette. And then last up, the Just My Luck palette. I wasn't super impressed with any of these. However, I'm gonna hold on to them for reference just because I feel like more monochromatic palettes are gonna be coming out and I can use them to compare. So holding on to these to compare, but as far as like ever doing a look with them again, I don't envision that because I just wasn't super pleased with any of them. Like they were all just okay. Okay, I've been avoiding this, but this is the Colored Rain Juicy Boost palette. I was super disappointed in this palette, but I'm gonna hold on to it because while the formula wasn't uh, wasn't there, I'm gonna keep it for reference, for, you know, to have for the brand and all that, but also too because I really do still love the packaging and I bought it, I might as well keep it and enjoy it just looking pretty. Oh yeah, I also have this from Flower Beauty. This is the Sun, Sun's Blazing palette. I really did enjoy this palette. Um, so yeah, definitely gonna keep it. It was a cute little palette. This is uh, Beauty Bakery, Do It For The Gram. I feel like I should keep it, like I said, for reference, but I was never really thrilled with this palette. I don't know, I was just unimpressed, I guess. Um, and I feel like they've come out with a lot more palettes. They probably changed up their formula, so I feel like I can let it go. I don't even know if they still have this available anymore. I mean, they probably do, but I don't know. I just I, I have no attachment to this. So should I keep it for reference? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think it's that special of a color story. There weren't enough mattes for me. So, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna declutter. I don't, you can hear it in my voice. This is the Milani uh, Gilded Jade palette. Definitely not going anywhere. I thought this was a really cute palette and I really did enjoy it. Okay, this is Morphe and Jaclyn Hill. I'm gonna keep it for reference and also to see potentially like a dupe of this because I would like a dupe. I wasn't crazy about the formula, so not keeping it for those reasons, but definitely keeping it as a reference for future palettes. This is from Dominique Cosmetics Celestial Thunder. Definitely gonna keep this for reference from the brand and I really did enjoy it. It was a cute little, very interesting color story, very interesting palette. This is Lancome's palette. I think it's Starlight palette. I was pleasantly surprised with this. Very neutral, but it has a little bit of color in there. And I just remember having a good time with the palette, the formula, all of it. So I'm gonna hold on to it for now. Okay, this is Seate London's New England palette that I just recently tried. I was impressed with the formula, but I wasn't impressed with the color story. I just was uninspired. So I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it, especially since I have a new one from Seate in the wings to try. And that color story is something that inspires me more. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this one go and and that way I'll have the other one to reference for Ciate's formula, but yeah, decluttering. This is the Elf and J Kiss It to the Rescue palette. I wasn't a huge fan of the mattes in here, but the shimmers I do remember are really enjoying. Um, I'm gonna hold on to it. I don't have many palettes from Elf, so keeping this. This is from Suva Beauty, the Protégé palette. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it. I mean, this was a cute palette. I like the concept. This used to have a warm tone highlighter, so it was like warm, warm, cool, cool. I like that idea of it, whoops. But uh, color story-wise, I don't know. I'm just, I'm never gonna get around to using this. So even though this is my one and only Suva Beauty product, I'm gonna go ahead and declutter it, especially since like it has such a big casualty. So decluttering. This is from Pixie Beauty and it's uh, a collab with It's Judy's Time. Uh, this was many, many years ago. I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this just because I am on Pixie's PR list, at least at the current moment I think I am. And they tend to uh, send me their new releases and I think they are they just collaborated with a new influencer, so I should be getting that palette. So I'm gonna declutter this and I'll have the more newer formula to reference and keep for Pixie's formula. So I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye to this. Oh, for Cosmetics Pro Palette, this is their all matte, uh, I think it's called Bright Addictions, a great palette to have, very expensive, which is just the hardest part for me to get over with this palette. It's just so pricey, but it is a nice rainbow palette of all matte shadows to have, so keeping it. This is the Makeup Revolution, the Emily Edit palette. Uh, I like this palette. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it with it being so kind of neutralish. but this is like a very gentle, colorful palette, and I appreciated it for that, and I had a good experience with it, so 
While it's big and bulky, um, I'm gonna keep it. I really like uh, Emily, I really like the palette. I'm holding on to it. Okay, next up is the, for Makeup Revolution. This is the Reloaded Euphoria palette. Um, I was keeping it for reference, but I have so many other Makeup Revolution palettes. Um, I don't have the, this is the only one in the Reloaded line, but you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and declutter. I'm keeping the other one that's similar, the Flawless Forever Birds of Paradise palette that has the same color story, and I just enjoy the packaging more, so I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye to this one. This is Selassie's Spellbound palette. Um, this was an okay palette, I remember. I wasn't super impressed. If I remember correctly, it's been so long. Um, but I'm gonna keep it for now, just for reference with Stilazzi, because this is the only eyeshadow palette from Stilazzi that I own. Same story with this Sinopia palette. This is the only palette I have from Mellow Cosmetics, so I'm gonna hold on to it just to have reference of their eyeshadow palette and their formula. And I remember enjoying this, even though it's super neutral. Next up is from Winky Lux. This is a kitten palette. Um, here is what it looks like if I can open it. This palette, I remember enjoying it. I can't remember too much of it, but this is the only palette from Winky Lux that I have. However, I think I might pick up their newer palette because it's more colorful. So with that in mind, I think I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this and say goodbye to this. This is from Rimmelunded. This is the Magnify Eyes Jewel Rocks Edition. I'm gonna keep this. This is the only palette I have from Rimmelunded and their formula is nice. I remember having a good time with this formula. The only thing that's annoying is how shallow and like skinny the pans are. And last up is from Butter London. This is their... I don't even know what it's called. I don't know what it's called, but we got it in a box. Oh wait, no, Natural Goddess. It's right in front of me. Anyway, this is the only palette that I have from Butter London, so I'm gonna hold on to it for now. Even though the color story isn't super inspiring, there's only two mattes, but gonna hold on to it just for reference. Okay, I can finally see my floor again. Let me go ahead and count them up and show you guys the pile that I'm keeping and the pile that I'm decluttering. Okay, so I counted it all up as you saw that somehow ended up in my keep pile. I corrected it, hopefully. I mean, I didn't miss any others. But anyway, if I counted right, I kept 102 palettes and I'm decluttering 34 palettes. Which I am honestly pretty surprised because I said when I started I'd like to get my palettes to around 100. So we are just over that. So I'm very happy. And I'm decluttering over 30 palettes, which I think is great. So this might not seem impressive to some people, but for me, who's very attached to all my palettes and just, I mean, obviously I kept more than I needed because I kept a lot of palettes for more nostalgia and reference or just because they're old and I've owned them. But still, I can't believe I almost missed this one. It was sitting up on my dresser and I told, or on my desk, I totally missed it. But this is the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette. Here is what it looks like. I'm gonna keep it just because it's like a classic and I think the packaging, the outer packaging, the sleeve is beautiful. I do wish this was on here. But anyway, keeping this. So what is that? 103. Anyway, this is my keep pile and that is my declutter pile. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me declutter and yeah, stay tuned very soon. I'm not sure exactly if I'm gonna do them all back to back, but I'm gonna try to have all of my declutter videos out fairly soon. So if you enjoy declutters, stay tuned because more are coming very, very soon. But yeah, with all that said, thank you so much for watching and if you wanna get more content Content for me. I'm over on Instagram. I'm LadyKD92. Thumbs up this video if you like declutters. If you made it to the end, thank you so much. I know this video is a very long one. But yeah, with all that said, I will see you guys very soon in my next one. Bye guys.